Hello. This is Andrine, your Jewish American priestess. I'm here for a reading for Tishrei. 5783 and here we are coming up on our very first Shabbat of the new year after Rosh Hashanah um, I'm going to do a reading based on <coughs> a couple of um, fruits that I discovered in my garden. So it is uh, the end of the, it has been the end of the Shemitah year, which is the year where we let the land lie fallow. And um, we do that every seven years to give the earth a chance to rest. And when that happens, sometimes fruit grows anyway. And so we have, I, I have these gourds. Um, last year for Sukkot, which is the holiday that comes up after Yom Kippur, where we build a little uh, structure outside and we eat in it for a week. Um, I sometimes hang these decorative gourds, and I hung a decorative gourd or two last year. They fell down and rotted, and some animal dragged them into my vegetable garden and dropped them, and, and the seeds planted themselves in out of the Shemitah year came these beautiful uh, gourds of different varieties. So we have two different gourds today, um, a, a smaller one with yellow on the top and a stripy green bottom, and a larger one with this very bumpy orange and dark, dark green on the bottom. So those are going to be our two choices today for the readings that we do. Do you choose this smaller gourd or this larger gourd? Um, so take some time to decide which gourd speaks to you. Uh, and we're going to do some Hebrew readings. So I'm going to go straight into it. I think I'm going to read... I took some stones and I made a new set of Hebrews this uh, last couple of weeks. Um, I'm curious to see how they they look and and work out. I'm going to set this tiny gourd up here, so we're going to start with the little one. Uh, for those of you who chose the small yellow gourd with the stripy green bottom, and I'm going to pull these Hebrews out of this bowl. I'm just going to do a scatter and see what comes out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out all the ones that are turned face down, and we'll read the ones that are there, and then we'll see if we want to have any more. So we have three here today. We have the Ayn, the Chaf, and the Dalit. And I can zoom in a little bit. You can see that a little better. So, uh, what I see for the central issue is the chaf. Um, and I see a little glare on it, so let me lift it up and see if that's better. It's the chaf, and it looks like an open palm. It is this, it is this shape, um, and it is representing the palm of a hand or the sole of a foot. It has to do with power and what one can do with one's hand or one's foot, I guess, stepping on things, suppressing things, um, maybe removing obstacles. And, and But it also has to do with, interesting, I'm mentioning Sukkot, it has to do with the shach on the top of the sukkah, um, that it is uh, representative of that shach that has the actually two of these chafs in it, and it is, um, we build the sukkah in such a way that you can see through the roof. You're supposed to be able to shade 
shade yourself from the sun, but also be able to see the stars through the roof. And it also represents sort of God's hands, there's the Shekhinah's wings um, hold, holding uh, protection over you. So, um, interestingly, the Chaf rules over the sun in the sky as its celestial body. And it has to do with the binary of poverty and wealth. So that giving what you have to give appropriately so that you don't impoverish yourself, but also receiving what you're supposed to receive so that you re maintain your wealth and also, you know, spiritual wealth. Uh, I think it, both of those matter. So it has to do with, yeah, again, Sukkot. It has to do with um, about uh, the wings of Shachina. Um, and it is about the palm of the hand, giving and receiving, and the power that one has in both giving what you have to give that's appropriate and receiving from others what you are to receive that is appropriate. So about a little bit about balance as well. So that's what's the central issue, and what's come right before that is the ayin. And the ayin is an uh, eye, it is vision, it's about sight, it's about both seeing clearly, having a vision, having the ability to see what's true, and about being watched over by the divine. So it's about both your own sight and also being seen. It is the number 70 in uh, the gematria, and 70 is the ultimate manifestation of the number 7, 7 being the number of days of creation, so it's sort of this ultimate manifestation of the completion of creation. And since we just passed Rosh Hashanah, I'm guessing that this has to do with the turning over of the new year. And it has to do with um, the yeah the 70s. The, there's so many cycles of 70 in the Torah and the Talmud. There are 70 descendants of Noah. There were 70 souls that went down to e Egypt in the tribe of Israel. There are 70 elders in the desert with Moshe. And it, what's interesting is that all of those cycles of 70 also had one more. So you had the 70 descendants of Noah plus Noah. You had the 70 souls that went down to Egypt plus Yaakov. You had the 70 elders in the desert plus that one that was Moshe. And so you really kind of have 70 plus 1 here. And interestingly, in the Zohar, the Ayin is frequently interchanged with the Aleph because they are the two letters that are silent in pronunciation unless they are in conjunction with another letter. So um, it's also representative of the number 1. So it has both of that idea of oneness plus the completion, the 70-ness of it. And it has to do with the foundation of laughter. So hopefully some joy in coming into the new year or completing the old year, whatever resonates for you. And then uh, coming up here in the future, we have this Dalit. And um, Dalit, interestingly, is a gateway or a doorway. Uh, it represents that kind of lintel on the top of a doorway. And it has to do with humility. Um, but it also has to do with um, just transitions, like going through a gate. Uh, and so it has to do with yeah, the poor, poor, uh, poorness, humbleness, humility. Um, some say that it is representative of, of David Melech, the King King David, who came from very humble beginnings, but also you know learned to become humble as a king, although he had some you know issues, of course, as all humans do. It is the number four in Gematria, so it has to do with the four directions and the four seasons. Um, the um, four letters of the name of the Divine. And it has to do with the binary of wisdom and foolishness in the Sefer Yetzirah, which is the Book of Creation. Um, it's one of the binary letters. It has, you know, uh, there are double letters. The Dalit or Thalit is somehow yeah, how it's um, perceived. And 
it has, so it has to do with wisdom and foolishness. And since it's slightly lower than the Chaf, I'm going to guess that it has to do with a fear that you may have about what's coming up. Maybe you're afraid that um, this doorway that's coming up with Yom Kippur, this, this time of, of atonement that we are going into soon, that maybe that doorway will be difficult for you to pass through. Um, so I'm not sure what that's about, but right now we're in this t time of giving and receiving, so if you have tzedakah to give, if you have something that you're supposed to give, it's time to give that. Or if you have some amends that you need to give, or maybe if there's amends that you need to receive, somebody's going to come and say something to you that you need to hear that you should receive that right now. So I'm going to pull out a few more. Um, Okay. Wow, so I don't have knocked that out of the way. We've got the mem and I'm gonna give one for above and another one for the future here. Okay, well that's fascinating. Um so what we have down below is mem. Mem is this gestation. It's about um the, it's the mother letter of of water. The creation element of water is the number 40 in Gematria, and it represents the um, the 40 weeks of gestation in the womb. It's sort of a container that's a womb with a little opening at the bottom here, and and so it has to do with Mayim Chaim, the waters of life, and this idea of gestation that we've just come through. We, you know, we've had this idea of vision in the past, this idea of the ultimate completion of the year, and some form of gestation perhaps now in these 10 days of awe that we need to take some time to really contemplate what it is we need to uh, make teshuva for, make, make return, um, and um, what kind of amends do we need to make in the world uh, so that's that's what's up with the mem and then what's going to help us through this situation this whole this whole situation is the is the zayin and zayin is uh, the, the the letter that represents the number seven is the seventh letter so we've got this ultimate completion of of the ayin with 70, and then we've got 7 here. And 7 is um, a lucky number. It's considered a lucky number because it is the number of days of creation. That it has to do with Shabbat, of course, the day that, because, because Shabbat was the seventh day. But it's about power. It's a sword and it's a scepter. It's, it's about, you know, sovereignty in some, some level. Um, and so it has to do with, yeah, royalty. And interestingly, this month of of Tishrei is the month that represents in the Kohenet priestess pathway the Givira, which is the uh, queen, the queen, so royalty, sovereignty, uh, the one who holds that scepter. So that's the thing that's going to help us right now as we go through is this idea that there there is power, there is sovereign power, there is divinity, there is um, there is this sword that can be used to cut through uh, whatever confusion we may have going on uh, that that we have that power because we are made of divinity. Uh, the Zion is also said to be the Shabbat bride so it's got this, this crown on top of it. This uh, it's like a vav with a crown on the top, and that is saying that that there's this this crowning glory that is the Sabbath bride coming in to both bring beauty and power to us to help us through these difficult ten days of awe that we are in right now. And the final letter that came out is. Tzadi. And Tzadi represents the word Tzadik or Tzedek, which is justice or righteousness. 
And since we're coming into Yom Kippur, it's only appropriate that we would have this idea of justice and what is going to be decreed for us on Yom Kippur, it will be a just decree. It is the number 90 in Gematria, which represents the number of years old that Sarah was when Yitzhak was born. And we just read these stories this week about um, Sarah and Avraham and their child Yitzhak. Yitzhak uh, also has the Tzadi in it, um, and he is the child who represents that all children can become tzaddik, um, that every child can become a righteous one. And it has to do with the foundation of thought in the Sefer Yitzirah. So as we come through right now at this time of giving and receiving, giving what we should give, receiving what we need to give, uh, re receiving what we need to receive, um, having just come through the finish, finishing of this year and gestating what we need to gestate during these 10 days of awe. Um, if we have any concern about being able to walk through that doorway on Yom Kippur to be, um, be judged uh, by the Righteous One, uh, then we need to not fear so much as to remember that the sovereignty is just and it is watching over us and that uh, we also have that um, personal sovereignty that we also have the power to do what we need to do we have the power to change to the power to give what we need to give and receive what we need to receive and we have the power to walk through that doorway we have the power to walk through this this 10 days of awe into Yom Kippur next week and be judged with righteousness for what is appropriate for us at this time. And that's your reading for those of you who chose the small yellow gourd with this stripy green bottom, this Shemitah fruit that is going to be going into my sukkah next week when we, we start building. I hope that that's helpful for you right now in this time of the 10 days of repentance and teshuva. I hope you find what it is you need to find uh, to give and receive right now, that you find your own power, are able to walk through the doorway and come into justice. And that is your reading, and I will see you uh, next time. I wish you a wonderful Shabbat, uh, a Shana Tova, and may you be written in the Book of Life and sealed appropriately. For those of you who chose the orange gourd with the dark green bottom, uh, this is your reading for this upcoming Shabbat weekend, the first Shabbat of Tishrei of this year. And I'm going to reach in and pull out, I've got some stones that I have made with the Hebrew letters. I'm going to reach in and pull out a handful and toss them down and see what comes up. here. The rest of these seem to be face down, so I'm going to remove them. Oh, except for this one, which is the blank one. So, I have three letters, and I'll pop that up a little bit so you can see it. Three Hebrews here. And um, starting off, what we have kind of slightly in the past and slightly on the lower line is the Tzadi. Tzadi is uh, the first letter of the word tzaddik, which means righteousness, or tzedek, which means justice. And it is uh, the letter that um, represents all that, all that aspect, the aspect of a tzaddik, somebody who is a, a, 
a, a humble person. You can see that it, it's made up of a nun with a yud on its back. So it's somebody who is humble but also carries the divine with them on their back as they walk through the world. So the tzadi um, is the number 90 in Gamatria, which represents the number of years old that the matriarch Sarah was when she became pregnant or gave birth to Yitzhak. And Yitzhak also has a tzadi in it, his name which means laughter. And uh, when, because when Sarah heard that she was going to give birth at the age of 90, she laughed, um, is how the Midrash goes, or how the Torah goes. It, you know, some, some say that she laughed with joy, and some say she laughed with derision. But whatever the case is, Yitzhak's name came from that statement. Um, and Yitzhak, which has the Tzadi in it, represents that every child can grow up to be a Tzadik. So you also, uh, me also, can become Tzadikim by, by being humble, by carrying the divine with us wherever we go. And that is, um, again, like I said, a little bit in the past to the left and a little bit low. So maybe there's some fear or concern about whether you feel righteous enough that, that when something is on the lower line, it can represent either something that won't help us or something that is causing anxiety or concern. And with this study being on the lower line, it, it, occur, it occurs to me that it's, that it's a fear. It's, it feels like it's a fear that there's a concern that you're not righteous enough, that there that you will not be judged uh, righteous by the divine judge. Um, and, uh, and, and I can see that's a valid concern during these 10 days of repentance. That's the thing we're examining in ourselves. That's what we're looking at, is to see whether or not we have that righteousness or that justice within us appropriately, that we will merit being written in the Book of Life as we come into Yom Kippur. And what we have in the center here, this central uh, issue right now, is the Ein Sof. We have this, this blank stone which says, you know, we're all made up of the same stuff. We are all made up of the, the material of God, that all of the universe came from nothingness. And will return to nothingness eventually, that um, that there is no end, there is no beginning, there is no end, that there is just uh, eternity. So we have this blank stone, which I, I love the blank stone, it's, it's one of my favorite stones, uh, because, because, it, because it gives me the peace to know that no matter how unrighteous I feel, um, that I'm still made up of God stuff. And that seems to be the central issue right now. If we can sit in that in that blankness, if we can sit in that space with the discomfort of our feeling not righteous enough, if we can just sit with what is right now, then we can come to the peace of the eternal. And what we have coming up in the in the near future is the Lamed. And I find it interesting that the Lamed fell on the floor. And I say that because the Lamed uh, represents, it's the one letter that reaches above the line, so it, it's, it's the tallest letter, um, in that it goes above the line, and it, so it represents that reaching, that elevation, we're reaching for a divinity, we're reaching for something higher than ourselves, and yet, this fell on the floor. It also is the first letter of the word lev, which means heart. And it is about these aspirations, these, these tall, high aspirations we have of our heart longing for elevation, longing to connect to Yah, longing to be one with the divine. And yet, during this, these days of awe, we are broken hearted. We are broken hearted as we examine ourselves and come up short. That's just the reality of being a human. Um, so having our heart, which is ideally elevating toward the divine, dropping onto the floor and, you know, it didn't break, but, you know, it represents sort of this cracking open of our heart as we make Teshuvah this, these, these ten days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. 
Um, love represents to learn or to teach as well. And it, it brings us back to this concept of understanding, Bina, in the, uh, um, in the Sefi wrote. Um, yeah, it, it, so it, ha and it has to do, this, this is the letter that um, represents the month of Tishrei which is where we are right now. It, it rules over the constellation Libra, which is also the star sign that we are in right now. And it has to do with action in the world. So right now, while we're in the 10 days of Teshuva, we need to m take the appropriate action, do what we need to do to make Teshuva, maybe to give tzedakah, to, to make amends to all the people that we need to make amends with, uh, where we're in this this blank time, these ten days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. So um, this uh, this Lamed here, it represents so much uh, that we need to focus on, and that again, that brokenness of heart. That the that the divine loves a broken heart because it is open and open to making teshuva, open to to returning to oneness. And to again to nothingness to that to that state of original um, sort of the blankness uh, that blank canvas that allows us to be a, a parchment onto which truth and life can be written. So those are the three basic Hebrews for you today, and I'm going to pull out another little handful and see see if we have something more to read. Um, I'll try not to drop any on the floor. Okay. This one goes away. If I need to pull, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull one more out and I'm going to set it above here. Oh good. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> That was the one I saw as I, I, di I didn't see when I reached in, but I, I imagined that was the one that was going to come out, so that's perfect. <laughs> All right, so the new letters that came out here, we have Shin, and Shin is the second to last letter in the Aleph Bet, and some say it is the last letter because Tav is more of a, a seal or a signature, um, but Shin is the mother letter that represents fire. And it has these three flames uh, coming up off the, you know, t toward the top, kind of licking up at the sky. It has um, the is the, it's the word ash, which has the sh sound in it, is fire, and it is the mother letter that represents um, the creation element of fire, uh, the fire that is in the, s the heavens, in like the sun, the moon, and the stars, uh, which are fiery lights in the sky, but also the head in the body, and so in the passion, sort of a fiery thoughts, or, you know, could be excitement, could be love, it could be also anger, so there's some kind of passion, but it also represents the, s the summer in, in the seasons, so we just came through the summer here, we just finished, um, the uh, summer as we came into uh, Rosh Hashanah. I mean, l literally the day of Rosh Hashanah was um, was just after the equinox. So summer had just finished. So we've got this uh, time of year that we've just passed through. Um, and maybe we've had done a lot of thinking, maybe we've done a lot of thinking in Elul uh, while we were contemplating the, that Rosh Hashanah was coming up. Uh, it also is the letter that begins the word Shalom, which means wholeness or peace. It, uh, it is the first letter of the word Shekhinah, which is the indwelling presence, the indwelling feminine presence of the divine. And it has to do with, um, you know, starts the word Shana, like uh, Rosh Hashanah. So it is about years and cycles and change. So um, that's, again, one of the things that has come right before now. The, the summer, the new year coming around, um, possibly some, some passion, some, some fiery thoughts uh, that have come up just recently, um, the presence of the divine. 
uh, and it's right above the tzadi. So we have um, this idea of justice just, just beneath the surface, or again, that concern about not being righteous enough, but we have the presence here to um, sort of balance that out. And then we have the mem, which ended up low here, and the mem is about gestation, and that makes sense for me in terms of this being uh, the time of the ten days of awe, where we are uh, trying to make teshuva, we're contemplating what needs to happen, and so we're kind of in this, this period of gestation, like it's a womb. It is uh, the representation of water. Mayim um, Chaim, waters of life. It is the mother letter that represents the creation element of water. It is the number 40 in Gematria, so it has to do with um, the 40 weeks of gestation in the human person. Uh, but it also has to just water of any kind, so maybe we're going to make Tashlik this week. Maybe that's what's coming up for us. Um, if we're going to cast away uh, whatever it is that isn't serving us right now in the world, um, going to a body of water could be very healing. Um, the mem being on the lower line, I guess, could have to do with um, being concerned about not being able to gestate what one needs to gestate, or not being able to birth uh, the, those amends, not being able to birth that teshuva that we need to birth. But we don't have to be concerned about that, because we have this knowledge that we are, um, again, God stuff, stuff that we are made out of divinity that the creation mater material is actually divinity. And so all things, all things in the world, including you and including me and including the gourd and the stone and the, you know, candle, they're all made up of divinity. So we have this, um, this gestation that's happening now in these 10 days. And, and we can, we can, rest in that water, maybe, maybe take a mikvah, maybe that's a thing that would be lovely, going into a body of water uh, out in the out in the world before it starts to get too cold to do that, or maybe going to a mikvah and, and immersing oneself in water in order to feel cleansed and ready for Yom Kippur. And what will help us through this period of time is the letter Pei, and Pei is a mouth it is uh, representative of the divine name speaking the world into existence. It's about communication, so if you have amends to make, please do that right now when you have the opportunity. Do not let it wait. Um, you never know what tomorrow will bring. So use your communication wisely. Use your m mouth to do the work that you need to do to create the world that you want to come into creation. Create the world with your words. We have that power that was given to us by the divine. That is the one thing that separates us from other species in the world that we can c communicate so clearly, so articulately with each other. And we can use that for good or evil, and ideally we use it for good. Um, it's also this spiral. It, it spirals in and it spirals out, and it has this idea of both macrocosm and microcosm. It is the number 80 in Gematria, which is representative of the infinite. Again, you've got the in Sof here, the, that without end, and Pei, which represents the infinite as well. 8 is the um, number that is one more than 7, 7 being the number of days of creation. So when you have the 8, that's as if it is infinite. After seven days of creation, what is there? The next day is infinity. And ten times eight is eighty, the ultimate manifestation of the infinite. So we have this idea of infinity here twice, and that's that's not a mistake. That is that is a message that we have this blank Hebrew in which tells us that we are made of that God stuff, as I was saying, the tohu vavohu, the, the void, the, 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 the raw materials that made up the universe. And we have the mouth of the divine speaking the world into existence. 
also representing infinity, the, the 80. There's so much going on here right now in these 10 days of repentance where we're concerned about not being righteous enough, that we're gestating something, maybe, again, maybe doing Toshlik, taking something to the water to, to toss in, to symbolically cast away those sins, or taking a mikvah to cleanse ourselves, even a little mikvah, even a, in your own bathtub, I know that's not technically kosher, but if you can find a way to um, find yourself being clean or cleansed in some way, that may be just the thing right now. And that will bring us to that place of the heart, the heart that reaches up toward the divine, that elevates us, and also um, that broken-hearted place where we then are open to teshuva, open to returning to oneness in the world and in the world to come. And I'm going to just pull out one more letter. I just get a sense that, that would be appropriate. I'm going to reach in, close my eyes. And here we have it. The letter Hey. And the letter Hey is the letter that represents presence. He me. Just being present. That's all that we are asked to do as we come into Yom Kippur. The hay represents presence. He nani, I am here. When, when the divine calls your name, when you get to Yom Kippur and the Day of Atonement, all you need to do is stand with your broken, open heart and say, I am here. He nani. It is said that the hay is made up of a dalit with a with an extra foot that was given to it by the gimel. <laughs> so it has to do with that um, unification, that, that idea of giving and receiving. Unity and completeness is the first letter of the word havaya, which means becoming the one who is the divine who who becomes, and it is two of four letters of the divine name, the yud He vav He. So it is one half of divinity, if you count it that way. But it, it, but it's also about presence. It's about just being present, just being present in the face of the divine. It's also about the five fingers, so doing whatever action you need to do. Again, love is about action. The, the, the Lamed. Do what you need to do. Speak to whom you need to speak. Do whatever it is you need to. Whatever gestation you need. Uh, whatever mikvah or tashlik you need to get through to Yom Kippur. And trust that the infinite is here. It's, again, no accident that we have two representations of infinity right here in this reading. So having come from the summer, having having contemplated or been concerned about, about justice, rest in the knowledge that the infinite is here. Do what you need to do. Speak to whom you need to speak. Trust in that broken heart that will be wide open so that you can say, here I am, Hineni. When you come into the presence of the divine in order to make teshuva, and for those of you who chose this beautiful orange gourd, that is your reading for the first uh, Shabbat of 5783, and I wish you a beautiful Shabbat Shalom, a wonderful Lashana Tova, Happy New Year. May you be written in the Book of Life, and may you be sealed for goodness.